Alright guys, so it's official. Someone has either taken the time or invested the resources to put a thousand dislikes onto my YouTube channel. I have absolutely no idea why or who's doing this. That's 20 dislikes per video. We have over 50 videos on this channel, so even more than a thousand dislikes. I'm not even sure why, you know, why would someone want to do this? It just seems silly to me. Um, yeah, but if you enjoyed the video, help me out, help me combat the bots, give this video a thumbs up, uh, and a message to whoever is doing this, bring it on! What's up guys, welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology, and if you couldn't tell, I'm actually reshooting this section of the video. So for the next couple minutes, the lighting's gonna be really great, picture's gonna be nice and clear, because I just replaced the lighting right here with a 100 watt equivalent LED light bulb, uh, outputting 1200 lumens. It wasn't the highest I could get, I could get up to a 1700 lumen light bulb, uh, but I thought that would be way too bright. I would be blinded every time I looked up at it, it'd be like the sun coming down on me inside this room. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we're gonna be taking a look at Windows 7 running on various amounts of RAM. I know we already did this once, but that was only with 512 megabytes. Today we're going to be taking a look at Windows 7 running on uh, 384 megabytes, 256 megabytes, and hopefully 128 megabytes of PC133 SD RAM. So when I initially started creating this video, I wasn't really sure how I wanted to present it, either in one big video or dividing it up into clips. Uh, and I eventually just decided to divide it up into three separate videos, each for the different amounts of RAM we will be testing, because if I mashed it all into one video, it'd be way too much footage to work with, um, and then it would just be way, way, way too long. The, the final product would probably, indeed, uh, probably end up being about 45 minutes, so I don't think you guys want to sit through that. So we're going to cut this up into three separate videos. Hopefully in each video, the system boots into Windows 7, so it actually becomes a video. Um, if the system fails to boot, I'm just not going to publish the video, um, and it might fail to boot with 128 megabytes of PC133 SD RAM because I'm not really sure um, if Windows is capable of, um, of using that just from uh, past testing. Anyway, that's enough of the introduction. Let's go ahead and get started. The machine T1090 is sitting right under the camera now. Let's go ahead and take it out and check out the system hardware so you guys know what we are working with throughout this entire video. I'm going to read off some of the system specifications, but um, if you guys want to see more specs on this system, I do have a video on it, so you can go ahead and check it out in the description. Uh, and then I did try to run the Windows Experience Index rating on this system, and that just failed, unfortunately. I don't think there's enough RAM to run these system tests, so we're not going to be able to check out the score. Sorry, guys. Let's go ahead and begin. I was struggling to get some more lighting over here so we could take a better look at the system, but I finally found this lamp and dragged it over. I think I did this in my last video too with the, eight, the uh, Gateway A32GM uh, because you just can't see a thing inside these systems unless you have proper lighting. Uh, so I dragged that over here. Now we can finally get some decent footage out of this. Uh, this is just going to be some basic system specifications. Going to go over a couple things. If you want an in-depth overview of this eMachine T1090, you can go ahead and check out my overview on my channel. Link will be in the description so you guys can go ahead and watch that and get some more system specifications. But right under this 320 watt Diablo Tech power supply, you can see the CPU heatsink for our Intel Celeron Coppermine processor running at 900 megahertz. You can see our PC133 SD RAM installed right here. Depending on which uh, video you are watching, it's going to vary. Uh, right now, there is 384 megabytes installed, but once again, depending on which part of the series this is, um, it's going to be uh, either lower or at uh, this amount. And then right here, you can see our Vision Tech 7000 video card. Now, the drivers will not install on Windows 7, people always get me about that and I tell them over and over and over again, the drivers for this video card do not work with Windows 7. So please, no complaints about that in the comments. Uh, we're just going to use the uh, already installed or, or the generic Windows video driver for this demonstration. To the right, you can see a 20 gigabyte Seagate hard drive, but I have been having some issues with this drive. So instead of booting Windows 7 off this hard drive, let's move over here. Ah, if you're one of my subscribers, you already know what this is. Uh, but this is a 2.5 inch floppy with plop installed on it. And this will allow us to boot Windows 7 from this USB flash drive. All right, so I just finished running Windows off 384 megabytes of RAM, and I was actually pretty surprised because it ran really well. Um, I didn't expect it to run that well, but during this segment, I'm gonna take out 128 megabytes, and we'll see how well it performs on 256 megabytes of RAM if it boots at all. Um, so let me find the right stick to remove. 
I wanted the 128 megabyte stick. That was the one I should have avoided with the uh, two-sided dims. All right. So this is the RAM that we actually wanted to remove. This is uh, a 128 megabyte stick of PC 133 SD RAM, and we are going to toss this to the side and see if Windows still runs with 256 megabytes of RAM. So let's go ahead and try it out. I got to throw this back in the system. So once again, like last video, I'm gonna to try to get this all in one clip so you guys know there's no video editing magic going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and boot the system up right now and we'll go into the BIOS. Um, just to verify that there is indeed 256 megabytes of RAM installed. All right. And right at the bottom, right here, you can see that the system is registering 256 megabytes of RAM. So let's go ahead and boot into the plop interface and select our USB boot option. And by the way, once again, we are using a USB 2.0 card to run Windows off of because this computer does not have USB 2.0 installed and it's absolutely painful uh, to run a live Windows operating system off USB 1.0 or 1.1. All right, so we're gonna select boot from USB. And as I did last time, I'm not gonna time it, but I'm not gonna speed up the footage so we can see the actual boot time. So if you're interested uh, in how long it actually takes, you can take a look at the uh, timer on the bottom of your screen uh, for the video, and then you can uh, you know, do the math. <laughs> All right, so it looks like the system might actually boot off 256 megabytes of RAM. Uh, we got the starting Windows logo right here, and hopefully the icon will pop up any minute now. I think that took about as long as last time, surprisingly. I'm, I'm surprised it didn't take longer. Alright, so it actually did boot up with 256 megabytes of RAM installed. So right now I'm just going to demo a couple programs. As I said in the last video, we are not going to browse the web or anything because the system's just not capable of it. So let me go ahead and bring up Task Manager. I want to see how much RAM we're using at idle. So we're using about the same amount of RAM as we did with 384 megabytes of RAM installed. Uh, we are currently using 208 megabytes out of the 256, which means we're probably only going to be able to open one or two programs at the same time. So let's try to open up WordPad. All right, same thing, hello YouTube. And I might have to come up with a different phrase to te uh, type next time because I'm getting kind of bored of this. All right, let's play with the font a little bit, set it to uh, impact. Let's make that thing a lot bigger. And how about we underline it? There we go, hello YouTube. And the uh, error message has already come up that we are low on memory. I don't think we've maxed it, maxed it out yet. We're at 236, so let's try opening up one more program. How about Paint? Because I know if we open up Internet Explorer like we did last time, that's definitely going to use way, 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 way more RAM than we have. Um, so let's see if Paint maxes it out. Oh, we're at 246, and I would really consider that maxed out as far as the uh, RAM goes. But as you can see, Paint is still pretty smooth. Uh, not really having any issues with it. We can change colors just fine. Uh, or can we? Because I just switched to the pink and it didn't change. Oh, there we go. For some reason, pink didn't work. How about green? All right, so that's working fine. The uh, memory uh, actually just dropped down to 224 megabytes right now. So let's try opening up Solitary and see if this thing crashes. Oh, well, it opened. We got the error message again. I don't know. It might not open now. I think I think we're maxed out. And you can tell I'm getting tired uh, because my speech keeps slipping up and I'm just about out of it right now. It's been a long day.
but it looks like the system's not going to open up solitary and I think we're done with the 256 megabytes of RAM demonstration. Can I just click OK and uh, exit out of this? Oh, yeah, we're not going to be able to open up solitary. There's just not enough RAM available. Uh, and unfortunately, the 128 megabyte attempt was not successful. Windows just crashed after a couple of minutes, so um, I won't be publishing that as a separate part of this. I'm going to go ahead and edit it into the end of this video. Um, so if anyone's really curious and they want to check that out, you can go ahead uh, and just scroll to the end of this video and watch the failure. So. Uh, sorry about that guys, we're not going to have a full video, but I will let you guys see it. Alright, so that's going to be about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, just post a comment in the comment section. Please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, don't forget to check out the other two videos, I will put the links in the descriptions um, as well, and if there's a failure, you know, I'll, I'll let you guys know in one of the videos, but uh, I think... Uh, Windows should boot on uh, down to 128 megabytes of RAM, but we'll see about it. Don't take my word for it. Uh, go ahead and check out the next installment, uh, and then you can see for yourself if it actually does boot with 128 megabytes of RAM and then 256 megabytes of RAM. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology. So this is the final trial. We are going to try to boot Windows 7 off 128 megabytes of RAM. I have that stick right here in my hand right now, and we are going to take the 256 megabyte stick out. I'm doing this just to prove to you guys that I am uh, actually doing as I say. So I'm going to put this in, and we will see if this system even boots. So as I've been doing in the last two parts of this video, I'm going to try to get this done in one continuous take so there's no video editing magic. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the computer right now. And I'm going to go into the BIOS just to prove that there is indeed 128 megabytes of RAM installed on the system. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. I meant to go into the BIOS. Ah, you're killing me. All right. As I said, one continuous take, so I'm not going to cut that. All right, here we go. And at the bottom, you can see that the system is detecting 128 megabytes of RAM. So let's go ahead and boot into the plot interface and then boot off the flash drive into Windows, hopefully, if this all goes well. And uh, as I've been saying in my past videos, we are using USB 2.0. Uh, because using the built-in USB 1.1 is just way too painful. So we're going to boot off the USB flash drive. And let's see if uh, we can get anywhere with this. Alright, so we do have the uh, starting windows listed here. And any minute, hopefully, the uh, icon should start swirling around here. Just as I did last time, this is in real time. I'm not going to speed it up or anything. And if you're curious about how long it takes, of course, you can look at the timer on the bottom of the video and do the math yourself. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because I know it's just going to take forever. <laughs> oh, and it did not work. So, uh, wow, it just crashed.